किया और हम सबको एक साथ जोड़ दिया और मिला दिया एक मैच मेकिंग का काम किया और मैच uh, मेकिंग में क्या होता uh, मैं जब भी अपनी लाइफ में देखता हूँ एंड इफ आई लुक बैक आई होप हिंदी इंग्लिश मिक्स इज ओके एंड विनोद भाई इफ इट्स ओके मिस्टर राजीव आई वुड आई वुड आई वुड आई वुड सजेस्ट यू शुड कवर इट इन मोर इन इंग्लिश बिकॉज बिकॉज देर आर अदर देर आर मेंबर्स आउटसाइड गुजरात ऑल्सो ऑल राइट एंड स्पेसिफिकली फ्रॉम साउथ इंडिया got it got it yeah. <clears throat> so you know when i look back my journey i uh, you know suppose i worked for almost 30 years i realized that in 30 years i have actually worked only for 5 years 25 years i have spent trying to find what to do how to do where to get a loan from how to get a pollution noc how to get this government clearance how what when and practically i would have worked only for 5 years 25 years spent trying to find solutions so perhaps the biggest thing or maybe the only thing that i have today to give to my friends is that maybe i can show you a road map that can help you achieve in 5 years what to be that and this is exactly we at imsme of india do that all the experiences all the time that we've lost in finding our way the next generation uh, should uh, not uh, spend that time once again uh, people don't need to reinvent the wheel or and if you know the way if you know the right solution then that should immediately be given to an entrepreneur so that uh, someone else moves much faster than i could in my lifetime so it is with it is on this uh, foundation uh, it is on this thought that the entire imsme of india and uh, its constituents have been uh, formed i have written an article uh, this morning and in fact the, that article today is the most viral uh, and i hear that it is uh, doing rounds everywhere and in this article i have mentioned about a 1953 movie called uh, do bigha zameen it was a bimal roy's movie do bigha zameen and why i mention about this as a child when we used to watch uh, one movie a week on doordarshan in those days a uh, lot of indian film classics uh, i we've all seen people in my age group they would be remembering and i remember seeing this movie of bimal roy do bigha zameen and many such similar movies and the typical story line would be that there is a poor farmer that poor farmer goes to the market uh, borrow some funds from a local zamindar for something and then there is a famine or a flood and then uh, he is unable to pay the debt so he'll borrow some more money to repay the past debt now this principle keeps getting compounding till the time the farmer loses the land to the so called zamindar and this is the typical story of india where a farmer remains poor and a zamindar keeps adding to his land bank uh, in this movie uh, do bigha zameen i remember the character uh, the small farmer who takes a 65 rupee loan from uh, from a money lender and then the money compounds to 235 and uh, so he leaves his farm goes to kolkata uh, becomes a rickshaw puller and uh, uh, tries to collect money his son becomes a thief and the father is very upset and finally when he collects 235 rupees and is prepared to come back to his village his wife meets with an accident and this money is given to the hospital for her treatment and uh, in the end the farmer loses the land to the uh, money lender and the last shot of the movie i still remember that the farmer wants to pick up a handful of sand from his do bigha zameen and the security guard says no not your land anymore and he could not even carry <clears throat> that handful of dust so it's a it's a heart touching movie and i want you all to see and why i mention of this today is that are we entering a time where hundreds thousands of micro enterprises are entering the same fate when at a time that the government while on one hand says we've done a great thing deferring your 
EMIs for three months, deferring your interest for three months. And uh, uh, while the same government ensures that the interest cycle is still on. So even if you're not paying your installments and interest for three months, everything gets deferred to June or July, gets added back to your principal so that your entire repayment changes once again. So it is the same debt trap that the entrepreneurs could be moving into. At a time like this, when Reserve Bank of India reduces its CRR from 4% to 3%, reduces the repo rate by a few basis points, so that is the time when the banks have excess liquidity. And what is the best option for them to place money? <clears throat> Existing regular client. And they are saying, we'll give you 10% additional uh, credit limit uh, so that you can uh, do some work. Now, on one hand, they are charging you compounded interest on the deferred payment for three months. On the other hand, they'll give you 10% of your existing working capital. So let's say you have a working capital limit of one crore, so they give you 10 lakh, which is just sufficient actually to pay EMI interest of the past or some creditors. And that you are borrowing money again to pay the past debt. You are borrowing money again to pay the past interest. Is it not a step towards the debt trap? I want every entrepreneur to give it a thought and we all must uh, but we're extremely serious about it. Do you really call it a relief? Perhaps the best relief should have been that when the government says, Mr. Vinod Malviya, Mr. Manish Shah, you lock your factory, no business, no sales for X days, but you have to pay salary to your employees. If they can pass this order to you, why cannot the government tell the banks that look for next three months, the interest cycle comes to a stop. Let the interest time clock come to a stop. So for next three months, no interest because the entire India is locked down. And the way you and I are feeding our employees through the ordinance and notification that have been thrust upon us that we have to pay all our employees, irrespective of the lockdown. Similarly, I'm sure the bank can also pay its employees for the next three months, not charge any interest. Maybe they can stop the interest cycle even for the fixed deposit holders. So the point is that the real relief would be when I hear that the government is stopping the, this interest clock so that the MSMEs are not unnecessarily being burdened. Remember the number of your days you are locked down sitting at home. Every day your interest and your debt burden is getting increased. You are not making any sales. You are not doing any business. Every month end you are asked to pay salaries and wages. Now if this lockdown period gets extended from 14th to let us say 30th, April or whatever, what would be the situation of a small entrepreneur or a small business? <clears throat> then we heard about a relief called uh, the Provident Fund. The government said that up to 100 employees, government will for three months pay 12% share of the employer as well as employee. Dear friends, this has two conditions attached to it. Condition one, you must should have less than 100 employees. Condition two, 90% of your employees should be of salary less than 15,000. Now it means that all the labor intensive SMEs are out of this. Number two, all service MSMEs. If you are in IT sector or if you are in, you know, an associate or a consultant, or any small business sector employing uh, 25, 30, 40, 50 people. Because, because 10% of your employees draw more than 15,000 salary, you are out of this. So, handful of entrepreneurs would finally come into this 
fact is that it is just an announcement and I think it's a peanut of an announcement. When I look at the relief announced by my Haryana state government on fixed charges of electricity, do you know they have announced a great relief to the entrepreneurs here. They say no fixed charges for two months up to a maximum of 10,000 rupees every month. So this is a huge relief that the government claims that they have given to the entrepreneurs in India. So my, I'm beginning with the thought that every entrepreneur must understand. And in fact, this is a time of test for the government. This is a time when the entire MSME sector is looking at the government uh, on all its actions as well as for all its inactions. And therefore, I believe that entrepreneurs across India, uh, Gujarat, Haryana, Delhi, I was talking to a lot of people in UP today, Aligarh today, Mumbai, Bangalore, Hosu, Kolkata, that how uh, different entrepreneurs in different parts of India are feeling. So uh, friends, I began with this note. I understand it is a very, very challenging time, but I also believe that unless entrepreneurs connect and unless entrepreneurs understand the real issues, uh, uh, the voice would never be same. And therefore, I give a huge compliment to your organization, Mr. Manisha, Mr. Vinod, uh, Malvia, everyone, for giving this opportunity to us to connect. So uh, I believe that we have to avoid this debt trap scenario. We have to avoid getting into the do biga zameen kind of scenario. And I believe that the MSME sector, which is the second largest employer today in the country after agriculture, this is a sector that really, really needs to be uh, saved. I also sometimes wonder that suppose in a suppose government doesn't want to give money. Suppose government says they don't have money. Then just remember the measures which I just mentioned, the measures which I just mentioned would not cost the government anything. Suppose the government stops the time clock for the interest for the banks and no interest is being paid to no one. So the fact is that no one loses any money, any money either. So there is no money outflow either. Similarly, in case of uh, EPFO, uh, the, the relief can be given that suppose for next three months we say PF will neither be deducted nor be deposited. Neither be deducted nor be deposited. Now just look at a scene. Suppose an employee for an average works for 30 years. In 30, 30 years there are 360 months. So out of 360 months of his provident fund, even if provident fund is not deposited in his account for three months, would it make a major dent to his social security or pension? And we're talking about just three, four months. Why PF cannot be suspended for three months? Maybe fourth month, fifth month onwards, we could start deducting again and depositing again. Surprisingly, there has been no such program for ESI. If government could do this for three months relaxation for PF, why not for ESI? There are many, many such challenges. And banks, I believe, have, have always been ruthless. And let's not talk of a time when you and I are doing well. So naturally, we are getting 10 calls a day, uh, people offering money for a car or a home or property or business or whatever. But look at a challenging time. Look at a challenging time when the banks become absolutely ruthless when I know hundreds of entrepreneurs who are planning to sell, to sell off a car or an old machine or a plot or a flat so as to repay the bank debt today. And then the banks demand prepayment charge, foreclosure charges, as high as 5%. There is a brutal bank called Kotak Mahindra Bank, and I name it. And you know, there are such banks that demand 5%, 5.14% prepayment charges. So at a situation when an MSME wants to exit from a debt trap, even then 5% of prepayment. So if you have to pay a prepay a loan of two crore or three crore, be prepared to give additional 10 lakh or 15 lakh. 
so which means you have to sell off one more asset only for the prepaid it is as if these msmes have become their bonded labor and this at a time when there are two clear notifications uh, of the government one by reserve bank of india that notification clearly says that individuals and msmes uh, would not be charged pre closure or for closure charges in case of floating rate of interest but banks are ruthlessly demanding a bank like kotak mahindra bank would demand and then either you pay or maybe you can go to the court or the banking ombudsman and if they give you relief they'll pass it on they'll reverse it so they have nothing to lose they will demand they will take money from you otherwise they'll hold your collateral documents and other documents and uh, later on you can go to banking ombudsman say that this, it was wrongly charged and if someone rules in your favor then they'll reverse it so my point is that we are taking up these issues with the government at at the time like this today also <coughs> nitin gadkari ji uh, our <coughs> msme minister he's taken a video conferencing meeting with various stakeholders uh, i am fortunately in one of the uh, uh, task force that has been constituted by ministry of msme under the advice of honorable prime minister of india and uh, it's an eight member committee that is reviewing every msme law in the business and uh, uh, so uh, therefore uh, i am discussing this also with you a time like this has come when we should be telling all our pain areas as well so that as a member of the task force we can look at this we are re looking at the entire msme act what extra powers what extra facilities what extra rights we can give to young entrepreneurs of india who who would be moving to the new india as we are moving there and this is also the time when we have to tell the government very clearly that the relief measures so far that you think you've announced are hardly relief measures what is it yesterday the government announced that they'll uh, give you a tds and it refund in time you think it's a big relief it is your due legitimate money it is just that the pro process of income tax refund in india is so cumbersome that today if the government says okay okay we'll give you money refund you money without trouble so you say it's a big relief the process of taking loan from a bank in india is so cumbersome that today if your existing banker says okay i'll give you 10% extra money so it sounds like a great relief so i believe that many of us have actually also lost what we should be looking at so this is also a time once we are looking at new india once we are looking at building a new india an india post corona uh, should so it is the time to learn from our present crisis situation why we cannot let, let our crisis go waste and that is extremely important for us to understand so let us learn from this crisis situation both individually in our businesses as society on our behavior patterns on our hygiene patterns on our cultural patterns and then of course with the government on what actions we are looking at i don't want a government of words only i want a government that means that backs every word with an action and that action has got to be real and because this entire gujarat is one state which virtually uh, leads india uh, through its gujarat model at the world the world looks at you through its uh, very modern perspectives as as we see your msme council is one of the finest in india i am so happy that i now have a my own unit at gujarat at sanand i have set up and uh, so uh, for rest of india you are your state is almost like a role model and uh, a gujarati entrepreneur is genetically molded i believe or genetically born as such so as to become a business leader and therefore from from this big business leaders i have not come uh, only to share my thoughts i believe that i would be working very closely with some of you so that uh, we take your best ideas best practices to rest of the world uh i have a small presentation and i'll uh, uh, uh quickly go to my share screen and uh, i'll try to uh make it brief not very long idea is that i uh, share with you some thoughts 
that uh, that are there in the presentation. And uh, this I shared uh, with Vinod ji and very quickly <clears throat> I'm there. We call this entire learning program a growth acceleration program uh, for small businesses. And uh, uh, if, if I take the recap of the last few sessions, uh, uh, you know, we, we have some sessions like uh, what are MSMEs, what are the benefits under CLCS subsidy, how to recover delayed payments, the various grant support and the programs for small businesses, all about loans, uh, how to start exporting and grow. Uh, the, one, of the, one of our very important sessions is how to detect and prevent internal inside frauds. And let me tell you, friends, just yesterday, one of our member units in my own city, Faridabad, they lost uh, 20 lakh rupees yesterday uh, because of the online salary transfers, which were fraudulently transferred to some wrong accounts just yesterday. And uh, the entire cybercrime team, uh, at a time like this, when the India is in lockdown, and you can understand how difficult it is for entrepreneurs uh, to raise their grievances. So this small unit loses 20 lakh rupees, which has gone to hundreds of other fake accounts across the country. And uh, who knows when the lockdown would open and when people could actually be stopped from, uh, you know, and that money could be brought back. So, uh, so it's, a, it's a very important program where we train entrepreneurs on how they can uh, build some internal systems where uh, pilferages can be minimized and frauds can be controlled. And this is only for the MSMEs that I talk about, not about the corporates. Corporates have their own audit systems, they have their own internal arrangements uh, and barriers. Then there are certain rights of every small entrepreneur in India, and there are rights of MSMEs. And, uh, so uh, maybe one of these days, if Vinod uh, Bhai uh, commits the mistake of inviting me again, so we'll talk about some of these rights. Uh, so these include a 2% interest subsidy that is available for every entrepreneur, 15% capital subsidy, uh, reservation in government purchases, uh, payments within 45 days, priority in loans, and so on and so forth. <coughs> so today is the episode eight, uh, where we talk about preparing to restart and what every entrepreneur must know about uh, the cash flow in these times and especially to understand how to do business and yet avoid getting into a debt trap. Uh, friends, uh, this Disaster Management Act was uh, announced on uh, the midnight of 24th of March when the lockdown was announced and uh, this Disaster Management Act was invoked businesses of the ordered closure. So a lot of the normal rights that you and I have to livelihood, to open, to work, uh, these rights are curbed under these times. Movements become restricted. And uh, then there is additional order under the Disaster Management Act that says, gives clear order that you have to give wages and salaries to all permanent, temporary, casual, and contractual employees. All permanent, temporary, casual, and contractual employees, and that you cannot lay off for some times. So different state governments have issued their own uh, you know, orders on this. Uh, let me, referring to the uh, Central Act of Disaster Management, let me uh, mention at this stage that this uh, one thing itself has created huge uh, so many, many issues. Imagine uh, someone who never worked, let us say, in the month of March. Someone who left you before Holi. Someone who left you on 1st or 2nd of March and went back home. Today, such employees are also calling and demanding the March month salary, referring to this. Similarly, imagine a situation when some employee joined you on 22nd of March or 21st of March. And now you are supposed to pay him till 31st of March and also continuing now till 14th of April. And if it gets extended, you will end up paying even for April to such an employee who perhaps joined you temporarily for one day or two days earlier. So there are many, many such challenges that entrepreneurs are facing. And therefore, it is very critical to manage the cash flow in the present times. Let us divide this presentation into two quick things. 
One is the preparation with the business establishments you need to make. Uh, this is suppose uh, on 15th of April. Uh, so, Rajiv, sir, I will interrupt you. Uh, yeah. Are you sharing your screen and presentation or you are speaking without presentation? I'm speaking with the presentation. Is it not there? No, it is not there because, uh, yeah, when you said presentation, so I have given right of the screen share to you, but uh, I think uh, we are not able to see that presentation. No, 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 just one second. I'll go again and uh, uh, there it is. And in fact, my presentation is there on my screen. Just one yeah. second. You have to share the screen at the bottom green uh, button. No, I, I did that. I went there and then I go to the desktop. Yeah, now it's perfectly visible. It's yeah. So, uh, preparation. Uh, uh, so, I'll divide it into a couple of things. Uh, prepare preparations for a uh, year that we need to make. Suppose the lockdown actually opens on 15. So, uh, how we need to prepare? The first thing that, uh, you know, uh, one important thing that we must understand is that uh, it is important to stay in touch with our workforce. Uh, we may not have any idea, suppose there are 100, 200 people working in an organization and many of them were daily, so, you know, casual workers or contractor workers. So have they left for home? Are they still uh, in your nearby area? How, how is their work condition? Hopefully they are not exposed to any COVID or any such uh, virus uh, during this time. So do call them, connect with them, uh, be in touch with them. It is very important so that uh, the day uh, it is clear that India is opening on a particular day, then your workforce is ready to join. So uh, we've done this in my organization for the last four or five days. Uh, every day we are calling up our workmen, our contractors, our people, of course staff, Zoom meetings we are regularly taking. Even if there's nothing much sometimes to discuss, our idea is to just come on the screen, greet each other. So every day one hour uh, almost we are spending with each other and infusing them to be in touch with the workmen. So that is important. Second is that how would people join you on 15th of April? Uh, would they be taking uh, crowded buses once again, crowded auto rickshaws once again, 10, 15 people loaded in an auto? What would happen to social distancing on 15th? That is a question. So would there be peak hour jams again? So what if someone brings in coronavirus to your factory and then your factory is in lockdown for next one month just because of one, uh, you, know, so, uh, you know, one worker, one employee, uh, you know, coming in uh, unhygienically. <clears throat> so therefore, uh, wherever possible, try to make your transport arrangements. Make sure that your workforce does not mingle with the crowd, the public transport. See if you can do something extra. You know, one small idea is that maybe perhaps you can start your office on 6 a.m. on that day. So that your people come on buses when they are empty. Why every factory or very office, every office has to run at 8.30 or 9.30 only? So can you defer the time? Can you say, okay, my office will work from 12 noon on 15th? So that your employees leave home at, you know, much later. Or it could be a bit earlier. So, uh, uh, or you make some travel arrangements. So these are important things. Then in your business, you know, entrances, uh, would you be checking them for body temperature? Uh, or would you be giving them some masks uh, to wear? Uh, maybe a, a, you know, a casual worker is just wearing a handkerchief because he cannot afford to buy a 20 rupee mask or a 15 rupee mask from outside. So establishments, maybe they have to uh, come a bit out of the way and uh, uh, ensure that when the people walk in, uh, they, uh, I don't know where they're coming from, but at least inside, uh, we can create some hygienic conditions. Uh, for example, in my unit, so uh, I'm sure you would have seen a number of you know, different masks and different, these, different sanitizers and other things. But we finally made one of the simplest, uh, one of the simplest masks, uh, you know, that now we are giving to our units. Uh, it's, a, it's a very humble, simple mask that we've done uh, with a shield. And even if someone is wearing spectacles, all you have to do it, just like your glasses, you wear your glasses, you just wear this. 
so with this your it is complete front line protection it is very very light so whether it is your security man talking to a worker uh, while they are entering any your receptionist sitting at the reception center and someone walking in or someone you know actually uh, riding a bus or on a public transport and along with this of course you can wear a mask as well so uh, you know one can add a mask if if you're wearing a mask and over this i think then it is uh, three times four times more protection and takes care of your entire you know because eyes nose and uh, mouth the, the, this this the zone where the virus enters your body a uh, virus does not enter your body through your hands or legs but it is just when your hand uh, touches the virus and then the same hand rubs your eye or nose or mouth so then it enters so if you are wearing a mask like this then even sometimes uh, even if you know you catch hold of suppose someone hands you over a glass and you take that glass and now suppose there is virus on that glass now it comes to your hand now automatically even if you want to rub your eye so there is something here so you just have to train yourself that before you take it off you first wash your hands and desanitize and then maybe you can take off and uh, or desanitize and then rub your touch your face so very small simple things idea is that you, even if you have 100 entrepreneurs you shouldn't be spending millions on this kind of a thing after all we are all small enterprises so uh, uh, find the low cost options creative options share with each other maybe 100 of you can buy bulk together 1000 2000 pieces together that is what we've done we've ordered uh, uh, you know 10 20 thousand and giving it to all our members for their workers so so it becomes very very cheap and uh, in fact uh, this is in two digit uh, you know earlier people were quoting at 300 then 200 then 100 so every passing day such things are coming down so there are many such brilliant ideas you know and so idea is uh, to ensure that when you your employees come there a where they come from i have no idea but once they are in my premises then at least that premise should be sanitized and therefore it is important to regularly stay in touch with them it is also very important to uh, train your contractual and casual labor you cannot differentiate between permanent labor and casual labor anymore in fact i believe that the time now is that every passing day you should be looking at permanent labor it is the time to have fewer people but permanent people so that you can <coughs> actually take care of them a casual labor who knows when they go back home where they stay in what conditions and if they bring virus to your enterprise it is your enterprise that suffers and it gets wrong so uh, uh, these are some very important things uh, uh, if you have a canteen maybe you can run it in two times or three times if you have a lunch time then don't allow people to go outside for lunch uh, outside they go normally they go for a smoke or they go for some tobacco or something uh, see if you can check that uh, because every time they go out even out after the lockdown there is a risk of coming back with the virus and using the sanitizers again and the entire process again so it's it's all about building a cult where your workmen need to be very very trained do not em allow employees with visible signs of cold cough fever to come to the factory tell them that if any one employee uh, thinks that he or she is not well they should just send an sms or a whatsapp from home and it's a leave that is granted don't force your employees to work anymore if someone says not well period give a leave and uh, so you have to ensure that no cough no cold no conjunctivitis no eye flu because in india sometimes i feel, uh, believe that you know our culture has been that we have never considered flu uh, a disease so anybody can come to the office with a common cold and give everybody a cold or with cough and everybody is coughing with an eye flu everybody gets eye flu so treat these things i think this is time for the entire community to become more hygienic and uh, you know more meaningful as they should be then the disposal of masks how would people dispose of masks 
I, you know, sometimes fear that soon the way there was you know, polythene garbage lying all around India and all around our hill stations, the uh, plastic bottles, the packed bottles, etc. I fear very soon we'll be seeing masks thrown around, littered around all of it. And uh, so but we have to train this next uh, gen on disposal of masks. And especially in business establishments, if people change their masks or replace their masks, how you would be disposing them off. Uh, think about every establishment as a bio waste generating unit. Every establishment now is a bio waste generating establishment and therefore right disposal mechanisms have to be understood. Please remember, delayed payment now is norm of the day. There are many large corporates, for example, Hero Motocorp. <coughs> they have clearly mentioned that they will not be able to pay because the stocks have not sold. Today, I got a call from one of the largest motorcycle makers in India. And I'm talking about the OEM. <coughs> and I'm not naming them, but they called me and they said that we are not informing you in writing, but we are telling you verbally so that you can pass on the message to the supply chain that the payments now would be delayed at, from at least 15 days to maybe beyond. So uh, enterprises which were paying perfectly till yesterday, now delayed payment is almost a norm. Many of these enterprises have invoked force majeure clause which actually says that some legal action or something else extra cannot be done because, and because of this situation, they are unable to hold on to the agreements and follow the agreements that <coughs> they've signed with you in the purchase order. And this brings in a very critical condition that because you have not made much sales in March, half of the March, March month was gone. So your March sales are normally 50%. April sales till now are zero. And what if the lockdown extends till 30th of April? So April could be a watch out. So one and a half months, no sales. So your March payment, let us say, which was due in May after 60 days, you'll get only half of that money. That too, if the, if the buyer pays you time, April sale, which otherwise would have come to you in June, because no April sale, so no payment is coming in June. While there could be orders at hand in June. In June, there may be, maybe you have some orders that you get from outside. So on one hand, in May and June, you would be needing money to buy materials, etc., to uh, you know, complete your new orders, there would be no past money flowing in. And if some of your past buyers also delay, as I'm mentioning, let me caution you that it could be a very, very serious situation when in spite of having orders, many of us may not be able to fulfill. And therefore, it is important to understand what a cash flow is. I can only show you a picture here. And this is what actually a cash flow is. So I'm not an economist. I'm not a very educated person. I am one of those aguta chap, illiterate businessmen, entrepreneurs who talk only on the basis of graphics. And this is what I understand. This is what a cash flow is. What you'll get and how much you'll spill. If your outflow is more than inflow, you're in serious trouble. And therefore, I want that every entrepreneur must do his or her own cash flow analysis. You have to make how much money you'll get in April, how much money you'll get in May, in June. There also keep a conservative approach because some of your payments could get delayed. Then make a second chart, how much you have to pay. For example, in April, you have to pay your March salary, irrespective of the law. On 1st of May or 7th of May, you have to pay for your April salary as per the government law. And I'll always guide you to remain on the right side of the law. I mean, there could be other people telling you left side, right side, trying to evade. I'm not guiding you there. 
point is if the law says pay for salaries pay for salaries it is a loss and then we'll of course we'll you know, talk later about how to minimize the impact that that discussion will sure take but then may you have to pay for april there could be lesser payment coming in may while maybe uh, after the lockdown you're restarting so make this must pay list and must receive list the expected inflow and expected outflow and it is where i say even though it is a debt trap mind you even though it is a debt trap but if you get firm future orders if you get <coughs> firm future orders and if you are hopeful that your industry will survive now this is very important thing that i am making today please understand if you are in restaurant business your business is not likely to restart for next 6 months if you are in travel business your business would still be hugely negatively impacted for next long long time if you are in hotel business i doubt if people would be traveling as much and staying in hotels as much if you are running a pub or a discotheque i mean gujarat of course is a prohibition state and that is why i come there so less but uh, you know uh, other places where there are pubs or discotheques or a video uh, you know game or gaming zone entertainment zone uh, water park gone gone so if you are running such an enterprise uh, like airlines like other things there are many many such enterprises that would be hugely impacted let us say someone is in the exhibition business the mice business at they say the conferences the event management the marriages all of these are going to be hugely impacted for a long time so if such an entrepreneur borrows more money to keep the restaurant alive i'm sure he is actually burying his own future so uh, some very different measures are required there and uh, that of course we'll be discussing one to one with the entrepreneurs who are faced with such a challenge but let us say you you are in a business which is immediately about to revive you are in automobile business you are in two wheeler component business <clears throat> you are in uh, mask making business where you you think now it is the boom time you are in a healthcare a sanitize maker whatever so point is that if if you are in a business where you immediately see an opportunity then this slide is for you then this slide is for you <clears throat> and i say a veil of all relief measure all the deferments because whatever you are not paying right now is the little working capital you are accumulating for yourself i know it is on interest that it is being deferred i am repeating that it is getting compounded also and yet it is only with this small amount that in may and june you will buy some raw material and restart your business so if your business has uh, you know a graph or you know that that's likely to go up this slide is for you you can avail of the relief measures announced by the banks and other things and uh, so that is why you have to make your choice and this choice has to depend upon you know it depends upon the kind of business and your own individual liquidity and strength uh let me uh, also uh, caution you that again if you see the cash flow the inflow uh, is going to be very staggered this is going to be different for different people for example if you have not exported something for the last two months now i don't know how much orders you still have at, have at hand i know many exporters who could not export because of lockdown now some some of their buyers are refusing to uh, pick up the consignments so their virtually entire season is getting washed out so uh, this is a cycle that your business would see for itself however i will caution everyone 
that please do not defer high cost loans. For example, your credit card payment. If you defer a credit card payment, the interest accrued is exceptionally high. Suppose you have a personal loan, unsecured personal loan at 16, 18%. Please don't defer it. Pay it in time. On the other hand, there could be some low cost loans. For example, home loan. Home loan is the lowest uh, interest rate loan in India. Around 8%, 8.25, 8.5. Defer it. Use this EMI for your business. It's almost like borrowing money for your business at home loan rate of interest. So therefore, make a list of high cost interest loans and low cost interest. And if you can defer some of those low interest uh, loan payments, that would be better uh, for your business. <clears throat> this may sound a bit unethical, but very, very practical. You know, in a flight, they always say, that in case of any drop in oxygen, your mask would come down. You first wear a mask for yourself and then you help someone else, even if it's your child sitting next to you. So you first have to wear your own mask and then you have to help your fellow friends. Same is in the business. You are in a boat, save your boat, everybody is safe. But if your boat itself gets drowned, then who's there to save? So therefore, to save your boat, sometimes you may also have to delay payments of your suppliers. Some of your raw material suppliers. The way your buyer is now delaying your payment, you have to talk to your suppliers. Tell them about the tough conditions and uh, tell them how you would also now release payment 30 days later or whatever and talk to them especially the trading companies uh, their their fixed cost expenses are much much lower talk to your landlord tell your landlord to waive off the interest rate very important at least ask your landlord Maybe he'll not waive, maybe he'll only defer, maybe he'll waive it to you, waive it, waive 50% for you. But start talking. Tell them about your problem. Write an email to your landlord. Write a letter to your landlord. And uh, last, in this slide you see, write a force majeure letter, email to your suppliers. If you are in a contractual uh, agreement with someone, that you have to supply something, otherwise there's penalty, or you have to pay in this much days, otherwise there is penalty. So invoke force majeure clause for your suppliers, uh, for your landlord, for others whom you have to pay for your creditors. And so that there is no legal, uh, uh, you know, uh, demerage that is demanded from you in times to come. This is important for businesses, that are in government contracts, that are in many, many other contracts. For example, uh, you know, one of my friends, uh, one of our member companies, they are one of the largest outdoor advertising companies in India. So what they do is they take contracts from the entire railways that, okay, every month they'll give this much to railways or this much to Metro and the, all advertising rights are there. Now at a time like Corona, the first thing that the companies do is they cut down all the advertising budget. So all companies have written to him, all future advertisements cancelled. All past payments due invoked the force majeure plus. So he is not getting payment for whatever advertisements he has done. He will not be getting new advertisements at least for the next long, long time. So I have advised him to invoke force majeure clause right to his uh, railways and metro and other from where they purchase the advertising rights and the space rights because it is there uh, that this kind of a legal arrangement has to be done otherwise they may blacklist him tomorrow and who knows couple of years later who remembers corona you know people won't even remember that there was a corona time and because of this there were so many deferments and i've seen many many such things 
demonetization days i know every day the government used to give some assurance some something uh, you know and later on as the income tax assessments and other things happened i have seen people suffering <clears throat> uh, save every penny that you have be prepared to live with it because it could be all that you have for a long long time so you have to hold on to whatever little cash you have today in bank because now till the time you make your next sale and you receive your next payment i think it could be some time some time so uh, i am not expecting any payment coming to me in april i am not making any sale in april which means i will definitely not get any money in june and how would i prepare for the diwali season if by then there is no corona so my point is uh, you know last diwali season also uh, was virtually a wash out and if this diwali also gets washed out then it's almost like a death knell for the msme sector and uh, uh, the last again as you see is that uh, whenever you are restarting you need to buy some sanitizer some make some arrangements some uh, better a factory layout some changes there so there could be some more extra work that you would be required to do so some investment that you would have to make you know cleaning your factory again etc etc so i believe that you should keep this money very very handy and uh, uh, i have talked to you about the support government claims that they have given some support they have deferred the compliance date some esi payment dates bank emis interest deferment uh, provident fund i have talked about if you ask me and i have explained before these are hardly relief measures these are hardly relief measures unless the interest cycle is stopped and that is what we are talking to the government about this uh, rbi of course has given some liquidity to the banks so maybe in times to come if you borrow your new loans could be at a lower rate of interest but uh, let me uh, you know let me uh, caution you here that borrow new funds for new productive ventures borrow new funds for new productive ventures don't borrow funds only to meet with your past liabilities you would be entering into the debt trap the do big hazami so be very very sure that in times to come loans may get cheaper and that is why i still i am asking the government to allow us to prepay our past loan if possible and uh, maybe you have a car loan going at 12% and now someone offers you at 8% so why you should not not have an option to pre close that and move here and that is why we are insisting upon the government to remove this prepayment clause so let us see how these things would come uh, sidb also has come out with additional funding scheme 15% of the outstanding amount uh, sbi has come 10% sidb has come up with a safe uh, program it's a safe scheme where they giving you up to 2 crore at 5% 2 crore rupees at 5% if you are entering into a business of healthcare a uh, covid prevention so if you plan to make masks or sanitizer or uh, you know ventilators or something that uh, can help uh, us fight against the corona uh, then you can get up to 2 crore rupees at 5% that is for the new productive ventures new productive ventures look at funding look at credit otherwise i would uh, certainly certainly not recommend and this is what was the title of my today's blog that has gone viral in india the do bigha zameen which is almost like a death trap for the msmes and we have to be extremely careful uh, we have uh, our institution imsme of india we are online you can download the app of imsme of india it is on android as well as on ios it's a free app download it so that you can remain updated with various things that we are doing and your things also keep reaching us and uh, of course in future we'll be doing a lot of work together and with vinod bhai there with vinish shah ji there uh, if we get an opportunity we'll definitely definitely do a lot of things so 
uh, whenever you want any particular uh, session on let us say fraudulent uh, practices management or any other thing that i've mentioned to you if there's any other query or question and uh, if you commit this mistake of inviting me again then of course i'll be back here so over to you minish ji and uh, vinod bhai uh thank you rajesh bhai and uh, we will be committing this mistake again and again in coming years sir mm-hmm. yeah so any so now any 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 rajesh rajesh ji it was a wonderful session thank you sir uh i'll ask uh, all the participants if they can come across any questions any queries right now we can have some question answer right mr rajesh yeah yes yes may yeah. i yeah you can i mean uh, have one, we can have one by one questions uh the the guys should unmute uh, raise a question and then again mute their audios so that there is no disturbance hi uh, this is abbas lehri can you hear me yeah yeah carry on yeah yes sir uh, see uh, the salary part which uh, you know government has said to pay but uh, in my opinion i think it is not uh, legally binded uh, it is not a legally uh, binded uh, you know uh, aspect legally we don't have to pay uh, salary uh, if we don't want to your thoughts rajesh sir okay uh let i'll not enter into a long debate <clears throat> in fact just yesterday we had invited the best supreme court lawyers on our zoom and it was an amazing debate and a uh, lot of interaction lot of fun lot of discussions views from all point of view but i'll just give you the crux it is legally binding to pay the reason is that the union government has invoked the disaster management act 2005 in fact the minute this act comes it is almost like an emergency situation many of the state rights many of the human rights they are taken away and now under this act <coughs> concurrently read with section 188 the laws and orders are enforced and if someone does not comply then there is imprisonment up to one year along with the fine so it is under this invocation of the disaster management act that orders have been passed specific orders have been passed that to check the migration of the labor to check the migration of the labor all employers are asked to pay them for the lockdown days without any deduction to permanent temporary casual and contractual so i am very clear on this we have i have done lots of studies it is statutory requirement to pay let me tell you even 2 months later 6 months later if someone lodges an fir against you that you did not pay them for this period it would be serious problem so my advice to all entrepreneurs please pay now there are some gray areas gray area is that if i look at the definition of the wage definition of the wage in the wage act minimum wage act now the definition of wage says that it is the remuneration for the work done now in this period there is no work done because there is no work done there is no wage and the government order says that you have to make the payments of the wages for all lockdown days so technically some people are trying to take shield in the fact that the order says that payment of wages is must and in this period because there was no work so there was there is no wage and therefore government of india in its order has backed up with another line and government has added that all such workers would have it would be deemed to be working in the lockdown deemed to be working so the government of india order is very very clear and wages have to be paid 
Second thing is that now some people are trying to differentiate between wage and salary. Wage and salary. Government of India <coughs> in August 2019, in August 2019, government of India has come out with a new wage code, as you know. And this new wage code was passed by the parliament and has, is already in the ordinance. However, for all the reason, for whatever reason, it has till date not been notified. So the law is made, but not yet notified. So therefore, you and I are saved. In this new law, it clearly says that there is no difference between wage and salary. So the new law of the land, which is not yet enforced, that new law clarifies that there is no difference between wage and salary. So now, if whenever the new law is implemented, even your senior most manager drawing a salary of 2 lakh or 5 lakh rupees a month can go to the labor court. But that is for future. As of now, uh, the salary of up to 24,000 rupees is considered a wage. Up to 24,000 rupees and above 24,000 rupees as a salary. Let me also tell you that this also has another reference with the Industrial Disputes Act. Now, Industrial Dispute Act is again very clear who is a workman and who is a staff. So, technically, if I say, if you have a tool room person, a technician working with machines, building machines, repairing machines, but such a person draws 50,000 salary, he is still a workman. So he's still drawing a wage, even if that wage is 50,000 or 70,000. So uh, therefore, a very important thing, and MSMEs will always fail at that. A very important thing is the appointment letter. If there is appointment letter, in 99% of cases, there is no appointment letter. But if there is an appointment letter, and that appointment letter is of a technician or a worker, and then maybe over a period of time that you call, start calling that person production manager, he still could be drawing a wage because uh, the appointment letter comes from there. So there are a lot of complexities. I can go on and on with the law because I, uh, you know, uh, learned from all of you, all of you friends and thousands of such friends across India. But let me be very, very honest and very clear. This is, this is not the time to confront with the government. Please pay for March dues. For April, now it is between now 1st and 14th. I know it is a very tough situation. Even in my factory, I pay a salary of almost wages and salary of 20 lakh. Now to pay 20 lakh rupees for April in a close down, what would I be left with in future? So it's, it's not a, a very easy situation. And uh, so we are knocking the doors of the government. We are asking the government for two or three things. A, like Australia, like UK, give us 80%. In UK, they have borne 80%. So government can do. But even if now, I, I'll give another solution the way I gave for PF, a solution where government also does not have to pay and it is easier for everyone. And that solution is the way government compensates a daily wage worker by giving him 4,000 rupees. For example, in Delhi, they say all the daily wage people auto rickshaw drivers, taxi drivers, people who are unable to work during the lockdown time, people who are running roadside dhaba and that is closed. So all such people, government of Delhi has given 5,000 rupees each. Haryana has given 4,500 rupees. Punjab has given 3,000 rupees. I'm sure in Gujarat also, some payment would have been announced for such a category. So if an unregistered daily wage worker can be compensated by giving by giving 4,000 or 5,000 rupees, why my factory worker should get 10,000 rupees? Why I also cannot give him only 5,000 rupees? So if government is trying to compensate its people by giving 1,000 rupees in Jandhan Yojana, 
or 4000 rupees to a daily wage worker why is it forcing you and me to pay full salary at a time of national calamity so this is another very strong legal point that we are taking with the government that either you share or co share this burden or allow me to pay 4000 or 5000 rupees the way you are paying to your masses so while all this demand this tug of war will continue to go let me be very clear we have to pay for march be prepared to pay for april however we are uh, very seriously planning to go to honorable supreme court and uh, first we'll talk to the state governments request them to pay bear the burden of this, these wages uh, of the registered workers also the way they are doing for unregistered or they should allow us to pay what the government is paying to the unregistered workers same we should be paying to our registered workers or we'll go to honorable supreme court for such a solution but let us see so all that is still to come but to answer the legal question the legality today is yes you have to pay practical situation is differentiate between wage and salary if you have people drawing 50000 80000 1 lakh rupees in your enterprise talk to them tell them that you are deferring part of their salary pay them 50% pay them the basic uh, the hra and other allowances can be deferred i'll give you a real example my daughter and she's a doctor and she's a pulmonologist and she's at the front line handling and treating covid patients at a hospital in gurgaon so she is the pulmonologist at gurgaon at a time like lockdown she is not locked down at home in fact she is working more day and night so uh, an employee who is in lockdown days also working in high risk areas working more hours such as she yesterday received her salary 30% less from the artemis hospital so imagine a doctor i mean our employees who are sitting at home government is forcing us to pay them full while on the other hand here is a doctor who is working there is no lockdown for her in fact more is expected from her but yesterday she received her salary 30% less and an email from the hospital that rest is deferred and she will get after the situation normalizes and who knows where so uh, if doctors can bear it talk to your senior employees defer part of their payment let me tell you if someone confronts you if someone uh, fights with you or threatens you that they'll go to the court or something it is the time to understand such employees such people it is the time it is the test of their character also and be happy that you have seen their true colors today if they cannot compromise with you today don't expect them to do something extraordinary for the enterprise at any other time so that would also be an eye opener for us thank you thank you sir okay next question someone has someone has answered that someone has asked a question on in the chat box can we give the salary in a ratio or a percentage in a salary from the lockdown i said yeah you already said i i i have replied to this yes you can talk to your employees uh high salaried employees give them part payment defer part payment deduct their earned wages uh, but take a letter from them that they are willing to uh, forego their earned leave or casual leave or sick leave and why not what are earned leaves for casual and sick leave for an employee normally gets 14 earned leaves eight casual leave sick leave so almost 20 21 leaves in a in a month in a year so why those cannot be adjusted in this time or half of those so talk to your employees i think it's an individual hr issue also uh, one more question is the disaster management implemented in india yes sir. Yes. invoked at the midnight of 24th of march so that is why uh, uh, all rights of all states have been taken now they are all with the central government so central government is directing them on what to do 
There is another question. Uh, someone is asking about that directive of Haryana state about the fixed charges of electricity. Okay, Haryana government has hardly given a relief. They said fixed charges uh, uh, relief up to ten thousand only. So if someone uh, does, if, if let us say in April the entire factory is closed and someone gets a fixed charge bill of let us say one lakh rupees, so there'll be a relief of ten thousand. The person will still have to pay ninety thousand. So it's a handful of relief, hardly any relief. I see Mr. Manikam saying that if banks have to put hold interest collection on the other side, how would they pay interest to their depositors? That is exactly what I said. For three months, stop the interest cycle. So banks don't pay interest to the deposit holders. So deposit holders lose interest for three months. Banks don't charge for three months. It is like putting everything at a standstill for a few days. If your business can be asked to close, and not work for 21 days, why cannot a depositor's money be asked to hold for 21 days and not be given interest? So it's a, if you can ask a restaurant to close, if you can ask a mall to close, if you can ask a gym to close, why you cannot ask a fixed deposit to close for 21 days? So idea is that the entire business cycle when it comes to standstill, all interest cycle also should come to standstill. Uh, I believe even the GST we have to pay for uh, March month. Uh, uh, otherwise, you if we defer, we pay nine percent interest. Yes, earlier the interest was eighteen percent. They have given you a huge relaxation by reducing it from eighteen percent to nine percent. They will charge you interest, but at a slightly human rate of interest. <laughs> so, so uh, there is one question in my personal WhatsApp. And they're asking like when we pay salary to the employee, so there's a certain breakup of the salaries, like basic salary, HRAs, then ESIC, crowded fund, social welfare. So can we pay only basic salary and can we avoid depositing? See, legally, legally, no. Practically, one-to-one, face-to-face, yes. Please do it. Okay. Got it. Then Sushri Shah is asking uh, whose responsibility is to pay the contractual or casual labor, employer or principal employer. We are in the construction industry, so whose responsibility it is? Always the principal employer. <laughs> Always the principal <laughs> employer. Except, except where you have given a service contract. Yes. For example, for example, if you have given a contract to someone. The cleaning charges that someone will come and do your housekeeping and go away. So that person comes with his manpower, uses his own soap and uh, you know other broom and sanitizing things. They clean up the area and they go. And now you cancel their contract. So in such a case, the, the other person is the con or the contractor is actually the principal employer. You had only given contract to the for the housekeeping, and others were his employees. So that is one kind of contract. Uh, however, the way, for example, government says, okay, you build my road. So you build the road and they are your employees. But in a situation where you hire contractual employees to a contractor, they come to your factory, they run your machines, and uh, they are the contract labor on his role. You are the principal employer. You have to. So you are responsible. And therefore, those of us working through contract employees or contractors, please ensure that your contractors pay to their employees and give you, submit you proper proof of payment. Proper proof of payment. So that should at any time there is any legal objection, someone claiming that the person was not paid, you have the proof that the contractor paid. So don't go by their verbal thing, assurance. Number two, don't go by their cash vouchers. They'll give you cash vouchers that, oh, sir, I have given him 5,000 rupees cash and 5,000 by check. Remember, the law recognizes only the check payment, not the cash. So even if your contractor claims that he or she has given cash payment to the worker, it is considered as low payment. That is very important. Sir? Sir? 
Ya empezó tu chico. Ah, I have a question. Sir. So we are uh, I'm a uh, entrepreneur from uh, Tamil Nadu, Trichy. Uh, uh, we have been uh, working in a rental space uh, in uh, someone's building, uh, office office space. Can we give them fifty uh, percent of the rent? Is there any possibility or uh, not? As we are yeah, locked out, I would say don't give any rent. Talk to them. Invoke a few force majeure clause. Tell them you cannot pay for April and May clearly, and June. Okay. Give okay, them a letter sir. that. Uh, you are unable to pay rent for next 3 months because of this and you are invoking force major clause and in july you will review the situation and uh, decide for uh, july and okay. uh, so at the most maybe he'll talk to you he'll request you okay give me 50% give me 20% but start with zero okay sir thank you thank you very much sir any other questions There is one question by Apurva Shah: Early wages payment employees shall be paid in case of no hours work. Early payment employees shall be paid in case of no, no hours. hours work. See, piece rate payment, any wage payment, daily wage payment, all these payments you have to make even for the lockdown days and deemed work. is taken at start the deemed work is what sir uh, i am parag i have a one question we are from gujarat we have uh, sites for uh, execution of fire fighting work at the four different places of gujarat we got a notification from the sarpanch that first uh, irrespective of the subcontractor uh, labors of the welders and the fitters we have to pay a salary second they ask that you have to pay a salary not on the salary but with the minimum wages so if my welder is on the salary of 12000 which i have already paid off for the full month of march they ask me that you pay with the 666 rupees of the minimum per day wages no i this is absolutely illegal and okay. the, because there is a separate a daily wage there is a separate weekly charge and monthly charge so the yeah. weekly wage rate is different than the monthly wage rate so you yeah. should refer to the notification uh, the minimum wage chart as given by the labor department of gujarat follow okay. that chart stick to it in case of any issue talk to your labor inspector or labor officer if you are compliant stay compliant but do not succumb to pre- local pressure or some gun pressure bye thank you i think minister we can take last one or two question and we can yep we can take one last one or two questions if anyone has want to ask anything in case we make payment and can we get the bargain by getting more work done in when the lockdown opens why not but the way to go but when you say but when you say bargain you talking about like what some agreement being done. right now no no right now we make some payment let us say 50 60% without doing any work like rightly what you said whatever you are paying so these monies are paid for doing nothing and in turn when lockdown opens you tell them your people to work a little more and get things compensated accordingly sir With mutual understanding, anything is allowed. Okay. Uh, you are talking about legal law, so you cannot take more than eight hour work a day. And if beyond eight hour, then double the overtime has to be paid. So you understand the law. So with mutual agreement, maybe you can convince your people to work two hour extra every day and not demand an overtime. but that i hope that is not taken as some form of bonded labor or forced labor or something else so that is why i am not talking about uh, i don't want to talk about all this it's all about how you manage internally with your mutual teams technically 8 hours a day work is there and anything more than that you have to pay double the uh, wage as overtime compensation and then you know entire new set of law comes in so uh, with mutual understanding everything is all right okay otherwise in case of dispute there is industrial dispute act and uh, that has to be referred sir i have one question as a supplier 
as you said supplier should be the least priority for the payment right but the supplier who is supply is dependent no no this is a serious question for me very very so when i am not uh, uh, i am not priority i will not get anything where should i go so okay. it means that i have to close my business further so that government should not uh, give me any challenge or no employee can be uh, any question on me that situation what i understood this is called what you can say personal force major or whatever this is a emergency whatever you can say for small people okay your point is very valid and uh, that is why i say it is unfortunate that sometimes i say that for example i am supplying let us say something to uh, let us say hero motocorp and now hero motocorp says that they'll be making lesser payments they'll be delaying payment then uh, actually i have to delay payment of some of my suppliers so therefore i said it is time to take your suppliers in confidence and rate to them your compulsion tell them that you are getting your payment 15 days late so they you will you may also be paying 15 days late you would have suppliers of two three categories one category would be very very small or someone who just drives a truck for you and takes your material from here to there so such a person could be a very small service provider uh, or some supplier who supplies you small items and uh, so naturally maybe to such suppliers you can pay they would be as good or as bad as your own workmen but uh, there could be other suppliers who could be very very strong uh, large companies who are supplying you and maybe some of them even take advance payments from you so there also you cannot hold the payment there a lot of raw materials even i buy and they say you first pay advance and then we'll dispatch so that situation also remains so there also you, you don't have an negotiation part your yes. negotiation part normally comes for in between suppliers who have some strength to carry on for example your packaging supplier your corrugated box supplier or uh, some component supplier who is normally give you a credit of let us say 30 days and you say now please extend it to 45 days so therefore all this is business management and where you could be you know when i have enough money i take some extra discount and pay them in cash discount also i take a cash discount and pay them cash but this is a time where if you are unable to pay talk to them the way you are extending extra 15 day credit uh, try to demand this extra credit from them so as a as a supplier perspective wisdom is we will have to make a uh, guideline yes for supplying the material <coughs> since see we have supplied our outstanding is already there and they will require our material to complete their job so we have a choice to give them a, our our uh, terms and condition if you need our supply then either you give delay payment but we can charge you interest is it is that possible that is possible it all depends upon you and your buyer see but it, it it should be it should be signed on uh, any legal document yes. or it can be a simple yes. contract yeah no, it can be simply on email it can be oh. on purchase order uh, oh. no special contract is required any agreement verbal or written both That's are both stand in the law okay basic problem be in our construction industry big wherever big contractors are there they picture always delaying payment they are very bad are payments that thing they are doing have you registered yourself in msme yes okay then my last one minute to everybody please register yourself as msme if applicable if eligible register yourself as msme when you register yourself as M msme there is a very important law an act that protects you from delayed payments the law of the land is very clear that even if you and i decide that you will pay me in 90 days the law says you have to pay me in 45 days so the law of the land is very clear that payments to msmes have to be made within 45 days 
Now, let us say in routine business, you are paying me 90 days and I'm okay with it and I'm not disputing it, no problem. But in case of dispute, when I will knock the door of the law, the law will ensure that payment must come in 45 days and all the delay till date that has been done, they will charge interest even on that and ask the buyer to give to you and that interest will be three times the bank rate. Three times the bank rate. So register yourself as MSME. So your foot is strong. Now you can offer some additional credit. If in case it is okay to you, okay to everyone. But in case of any dispute at any stage, at least you have recourse to law and you get protected by this 45 days payment. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, personally, I am myself a member of the Haryana Facilitation Council and your Gujarat Facilitation Council is also a very strong body. So your council and Haryana Council together, these two councils have uh, recovered payments worth more than 600 crore delayed payments for uh, MSME sector just in these two states. So fortunately, you are in very good hands. Gujarat is administratively a very well-managed state. So uh, uh, you should be, you are much better placed than many other state and entrepreneurs elsewhere. Thank you, sir. Raju, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have been uh, meeting our uh, company's uh, needs uh, as in time, sir. If you have any doubts in future, how can we contact you, sir? Sir, <coughs> I request you, uh, we uh, download the app of IMSME of India, and I just mentioned, and uh, uh, we have a very basic online membership. It is only 1,000 rupees for one year. 999 rupees only for one year. So, uh, uh, join that online and uh, uh, you know it is the largest network we'll be in touch you can ask your questions we'll reply we'll do such room meetings uh, ask other entrepreneurs in your area also uh, 1000 rupees a year is nothing it's uh, it's hardly any cost so idea is that, that we should all remain connected so that we can uh, listen to each other issues and delhi at least you know your voice from tamil nadu and gujarat and Coimbatore and other areas can reach Delhi also through our offices. And uh, we all find. So join I am of India and I invite you. Uh, okay, so then uh, when we have any uh, queries about loss, I have a co partner or a co colleague, Samir Bhai, who has come to the statement. Maybe though there is a Koshish Karada, Kishi is a contact the Niki to ask who Ravindi Ji to throw up the contact of fire. तो आज वो कमिश्नर नहीं थे और लंबा सर से बात हुई है उनकी तो हम वो सिस्टम तैयार कर रहे हैं वो साइट भी देख के आ गए हैं ऑलरेडी वहां पे तो मिस्टर मिस्टर वलवती ओके फ्रेंड्स आई हैव जस्ट रिटन माय ईमेल आईडी डाउन इफ यू कैन सी आई हैव जस्ट रिटन माय ईमेल आईडी डाउन सो इफ यू कैन नोट इट डाउन फॉर एनी क्यूरी यू कैन राइट टू any of these emails, chairman at imsmeofindia.com or info at imsmeofindia.com. So uh, if, if you want to remain connected, just send us a test email and uh, we'll add your email ID to our database. So you will keep updating yourself and do join IMSME of India online. And uh, I think you'll get good value for it. I would be sharing Raju uh, all the Mr. details. Hello, so we, uh, let's control like I think it's almost okay. six. Raji, only one. Raji, only one question from my end. Uh, 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 in the MSME, see there are many consultants also in this group. Uh, and and uh, under the MSME, can the consultants be also be part of MSME? Yes, sir. All self-employed, all self-employed, chartered accountants, architects. Uh, anyone, you, we're all small business people and your payments will also be protected. You give consultancy to someone, raise a bill, you don't get paid, your payments will also be protected. Uh, so all these rights of entrepreneurs are accrued. So uh, connect with us and we'll help you register as MSME entrepreneur uh, because everything is online and I'm Traders sure can you can also enjoy these benefits. Okay. Traders can join MSME? Okay, uh, my one request to everyone. And this request is worth $1 million. 
but i'll give it free for my friends <laughs> stop calling yourself traders if you know trading is a word jo ki log bahut negative sunte hain people you know so people think trader means people who hold money who people who hold stocks people who do black marketing etc you not traders you are service providers yeah true you are service providers you provide solutions to me so when you give me raw material you also give me solutions when you are selling me a computer you are also giving me it services so you are a service provider you are if you are selling me a motor then or a fan then you are also sending an electrician to fit that fan so you are also true. giving me service if i buy air conditioner from you so you also give me service you know to cleaning and etc so please stop calling yourselves as traders you are service providers you you are raw material service provider you are a consultant you provide services so all of us are service providers or manufacturers or a combination of both and therefore all of us are entrepreneurs and law has only one word law recognizes us as enterprise you can be a manufacturing enterprise you can be a service enterprise so all traders you you know if i discuss with you there would be many services that you would you would be doing at my end in terms of guiding me giving me solutions so therefore you you sell me a machine and then you also take amc on that you know so there are lots of services backed up so you are all service providers so the minute you say you are a service provider you are an enterprise and everybody gets protection bill okay thank you great Other great, great thanks mr rajiv it, uh, on behalf of our entire ipa indian plumbing association i would say i would not say amdavad chapter because uh, there have been members from across india i have seen attended attendees from tamil nadu kaimbat i mean from kaimbatur from nashik from delhi uh, from various parts of the country uh, i thank on behalf of the entire association and maybe in coming time we'll have a second we'll make a commit a mistake of calling you another time maybe maybe within this lockdown period or maybe after the lockdown period also thanks on thanks thanks on again to everyone for the participation you know now we can just close the session yeah so i would request all of you if you are having any kind of question and queries please write mail to us we will make a list of the question we will forward to mr rajiv's office and he is a very responsive person and he he will reply you in uh, some time we understand we could not take your questions or you might be having certain question after this session so you are feel free to write mail to us and rajiv ji bye a heartfelt thanks to you actually usually in ip tradition we uh, give respect by giving some kind of moment to from the our andaba chapter but is a physical distance and we cannot do this uh, formality so i request all of you kindly unmute yourself and give huge round of uh, as you yeah that's sure thanks so much sir. thank you so much so much thank you thank you so much sir to discuss on the topic we were talking on the whatsapp on ec thank you thank you thank you very much thank you thank you thank you everyone we'll catch up thank you thank you very much thank you this situation i i shared some videos vinod ji vinod ji lockdown is strictly followed by us म्यूट कर दे एक बार Yeah, I I did I did. Yeah. You now you can unmute yourself, Nishra. Hello, everyone. Hello. Except except for Ahmedabad chapter executive committee, committee members, I will request everyone to just leave the chat box.
Still, there are 18 participants. Kindly, there is a right hand side, but there is one button. It's called leave meeting. So kindly leave the meeting. Chetan bhai. Okay, I, I need to. Maybe, maybe, Vinod, can you just. Uh, I can remove them one by one. Them. Yeah, I'm, you I'm can just remove them one by one. Good, yeah. Deepin Bhai is not online. He was no, there. Only, only we five people are here. Baki Deepin Bhai, Deepin Bhai, Havin Bhai, I think they have. Nothing. I have done it. I have done it. I have done it. Eight, eight people are on chat or we are five only? There are only five. Baki is uh, left here. Okay, okay. Yeah, five participants. Deepin Bhai. Yeah, the topic, Vinod Bhai, the topic and points you have raised in the EC regarding the STP or a wastewater treatment, the fundamental answer by Muni Bhai is this is a subject which you want to cover in one hour, which is not possible. Right now, whatever see, organic chemistry or even uh, biochemistry or even genome, if you go into the details with the, uh, yesterday's even email of uh, WHO and uh, Harvard and uh, even uh, uh, Michigan, MIT, and even uh, Netherlands, you can understand the subject needs much more understanding. See, wastewater can depict what chemicals any individual or even biological microbial side anyone is coming across. So, subject itself is a very deep subject, can't be covered like this. And it has to be, means you want ready-made formula 44, which is not available. He's saying we have to learn, keep on learning and minimum two hours. Whatever we have done until now, maybe we have to rewrite all the standards. Many new things will come. And that is something if all of us are open to learn, it is a continuous process. Maybe like uh, in a lockdown period, we are free, we are talking. When genuinely he was available or he was coming for a dialogue, no one was ready to even learn or listen to him. Now, when the crisis has come, we are looking at him. But the point is, he is even talking to NIT, he is talking to IIT, even he is talking to many other engineering colleges in Surat. And uh, even one time Ketan Bhai was there, we had a very close discussion. Three or four people only were there. The point is very simple. Are we really genuinely want to learn? First question is that we we today virus has put to this difficulty. So we are trying to talk, but that's not the way to look forward. If genuinely we want to learn this, it is something. See, I can show you. I am reading this book. Are you been able to see this book? This is 300 page volume. In every page. There are even 100 words which are something to be referred back to dictionary. And even reading 100 pages has taken almost uh, maybe 20 days. So it is that difficult and understanding of all that is very, very difficult. Unless and until we understand all we will be able to conclude uh, very clearly on the uh, results we are looking at it. So this is something he has conveyed. So what he can't, he can't be contacted like this and he is saying in one hour, maybe two hours, it is a subject can't be discussed. There are so many presentation. Unfortunately, what has happened, my presentation, which I did when your presentation doesn't, did not take off, I only talked about SML uh, case study and where zero energy, zero discharge I showed.